Electronics. Today's class we are going to see the questions of the latest examination which happened for technical assistant that is LPSC technical assistant examination question paper we are going to discuss. So this is a solution video part one of LPSC technical assistant examination. So the exam happened on 23rd of February which is very latest one. So I was receiving a lot of requests to do the solution video of this. So here it is. So let us see the question. The first question that we are going to discuss today is this. This is a assembly language programming, very simple programming it is. You just have to understand uh, how the program is working. This is simply a loop in which an addition is performing and uh, this loop is running with a count. Okay, so move a comma hash zero, uh, simply a zero is being loaded to a, then move r two comma hash ten, this is the count. Okay. Later on, you will understand that this is a count register and the count is 10. Then again, this is a loop. Add a comma hash 25 and dj initiate r2 again. That is this addition. This is actually the uh, operation that is happening in this code. That is adding of a with 25 repeatedly. That is multiple times 25 is being added to register. Whatever content is present in register a, it is being added with 25 again and again till r2 is non-zero that is dj inset means decrement and jump beef non-zero that is dj inset so if you have uh, studied assembly language programming you should be knowing this so r2 and again so till the r2 is non-zero or the moment r2 is zero it will jump to the next line that is out of this loop that is happening so the initial count or the content of a is zero so since a is initially 0 and uh, it is been added with 25, how many times 25 is getting added with that a? 10 times, right? Okay, so simply since a is 0, no other value is present in a, you can uh, consider this as 25 is added 10 times. So 25 into 10, you can consider this addition like this because there is no value present in A. So, we can think of 25 into 10 times. 10 times this loop is repeating. This addition is happening 10 times. Because the count register is having value 10. Okay. So, 25 into 10. So, the value is 250 is the value which is present in the register A. You know that if add A comma hash 25 or any addition is performed, after the addition is uh, performing or performed, the result is present in which register? Register A. A register. Right. So, the A register will be having the result. So, A is having what value? 25 into 10 which is equal to 250 is the value present in A. And when the moment you jump out of the loop, the next instruction is move R5 comma A. Question is what is the output of the code in R5 register that is what is the content present in R5 you need to find. So whatever the result of this loop is or whatever the result of this addition is it will be present in R5. Whatever the value present in A it is moving it is getting moved to R5. So the content of R5 is actually the result. Okay what it is it is 250 but if you see here it is not given in 250 or any value it is given hex value right. So what is the hex equivalent of x equivalent of 250 and uh, the value corresponding to 250 is nothing but f a h is the value okay so the correct answer for this question is d which is f a h is the answer a carrier modulated to a depth of 40 percentage the increased power is dash okay so the equation for transmitted power pt or total power pt is equal to pc which is a carrier power into 1 plus m square by 2 where m is the modulation index pt is the transmission power pc is the power of the carrier wave okay here we need to find when the carrier is modulated by 40 percentage that is here it is given modulated to a depth of this is actually indicating the modulation index nothing else it is modulation depth means it is indicating modulation index Okay, when the carrier is getting modulated to a depth of 40 percentage, how much power is increased? So, first we have to think of the case when the uh, modulation index or the modulation is not done. So, when modulation is not done, we can think of m is equal to 0, right? 
So the transmitted power or PT is equal to PC into 1 plus here M is 0. So PC into 1. You can think it of like that since M is 0. Okay, so first PT1, the initial power, when modulation is not done, is equal to PC itself, right? That is a power of carrier. Now consider that when the wave, when the carrier is modulated to a depth of 40 percentage. Now when 40 percentage is modulation depth means modulation index M will be equal to 40 by 100, right? So it is 0.4 is the modulation index. This is how you have to calculate modulation index from depth of modulation. So when the question is uh, modulation depth, don't get confused or don't get stuck. You can calculate the modulation index by taking by, by taking that is 40 percentage means 40 by 100. So 40 by 100 which is equal to 0.4 is the modulation index. Now substitute this value in your power equation. So PT is equal to now PC. We don't know the value of PT or PC. So keep it like that into 1 plus 0.4 square by 2. Okay, so you will get it is 1.08. This will be your new power or you can call it as PT2. PT2 is equal to PC into 1.08. So in order to calculate the increase in the power, we need to take the difference between these two. That is PT2 minus PT1, which is 1.08 minus 1, 1 times PC. That is 0 0.08 PC. So how much percentage it is? That is 0 0.08 is the increase, right? So it is actually, you can write it as 0.08. 0, 0.8 into 100 that is 8 percentage is the increase in the power when the carrier is modulated to a depth of 40 percentage. That is increase in the power in percentages. 8 percentage is the increase in the power. Correct answer here is option D. Next set of questions is this. These are set of very simple questions. First question is in simplex uh, channel flow of data is dash. This is a very, very simple question. We have discussed about simplex, half duplex and full duplex in very, very detail in one of the previous videos. Anyway, uh, just understand that simplex is a mode of communication in which there is only the communication is happening only in one path, only in one path, not from the uh, other path to this. Uh, that is if the this is the sender, this is the receiver. So, the communication is happening only from the sender to the receiver, not from the receiver side. Nothing is coming back. Then that communication is called simplex mode of communication. Now, if the communication is happening in both directions, but only one at a time, that is called half duplex. And full duplex means both this can happen simultaneously. Anyway, this is a very brief discussion about these three type of communications. Okay. So I hope, I hope that this is very simple topic and uh, everybody will be knowing this and we have also discussed in very much detail. Anyway, the answer for this, uh, now you will be able to answer. I will read out the options. In both direction, but one at a time, no. Always in both direction, no. Always in one direction, yes. So the communication in simplex or the data flow in simplex always happen in only one direction all the time. Okay, correct answer is option C. The question is, which of the following performs mathematical operations of CPU? Okay, which, uh, which is the unit which performs all the mathematical operation in general? It will be ALU. Option A, DIMM, no. B, BES, no. BES is not performing any mathematical operations. Register, no. D, ALU is the correct answer. Okay, in general, in most of the all processors, ALU is the arithmetical and logical unit which performs all the mathematical operations. Correct answer is D, ALU. Next one is a logic gate and you need to find the output of this gate. This is a XNOR gate. Okay, So this is uh, XNOR gate with one input is A and the other input is connected to the ground. So whenever you are seeing this ground, you should take this as a zero input. Okay, So you know that the output of a X 
nor gate consider the next input is x i'm just taking it as x we'll later on put it as zero okay a x nor x is a into x plus the expansion is a bar into x bar now we'll put this x as zero so a into zero plus a bar into zero bar is one so the answer is a bar is the answer correct answer here is option d okay this is also a very simple question okay so while analyzing the question paper i could uh, understand that the questions are not very very tough uh, all the questions are mainly from the core areas and uh, they are uh, only asking questions from the basic equations not into the very detail the question paper was actually uh, more or less simple if you know the core concepts okay let us see the next set of questions next set of questions is this first question is lvdt is used for measuring dash this is a very basic question lvdt is used for measuring of displacement the full form of lvdt if you don't know it is linear variable differential transformer or it can also be called as linear variable displacement transducer okay so from this term lvdt is used for measuring of displacement correct answer is option a which is displacement is not pressure temperature or none of this it is displacement lvdt is linear variable different uh, displacement transducer transducer or differential transformer okay it can be called in both ways correct answer here is option a which is displacement next is a very very basic question we have discussed in a lot of videos okay the relationship between alpha and beta of a transistor these are two current gain factors uh, okay current gain factors of transistors alpha beta and also one more there uh, it is gamma the relationship between alpha and beta is alpha is equal to beta by 1 plus beta and beta is equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha and gamma is equal to 1 plus beta this is the relationship if you don't know please note this down okay so the relationship between alpha and beta here you need to uh, find the relation of alpha in terms of beta so it is alpha is equal to beta by 1 plus beta correct answer is option c is the correct answer resonant frequency of rf amplifier is 1 megahertz and its bandwidth is 10 kilohertz what is the quality factor okay so we have discussed this in the video of resonance in rlc circuit series and parallel rlc circuit the equation for finding the quality factor please note this down it is resonant frequency omega 0 or in terms of f0 you can write this is angular frequency by delta omega which is the bandwidth so here both the resonant frequency and the bandwidth is given so you can directly substitute and find the value okay so the resonant frequency is 1 megahertz by the uh, bandwidth is 10 kilohertz so 10 kilohertz so if you solve it you will get it is 1 megahertz by 10 kilohertz is 100 okay so the correct answer for the quality factor q is 100 correct answer is option d is the correct answer this is the equation for finding the quality factor okay u is equal to resonant frequency by bandwidth is the equation this the total circuit impedance of series rlc circuit is dash okay so the series rlc circuit consists of resistance inductance and capacitance that is why it is called rlc circuit it is a series circuit okay so the impedance is impedance is square root of r square plus xl minus xc the whole square so this we have discussed while discussing the resonance in series rlc circuit that video we have discussed this so this is the equation for finding the total circuit impedance okay uh, for the resistive element there is no uh, there is no uh, imaginary term or it is a pure resistive element so it is r square plus for the l and c we have to take the reactance so xl minus xc the whole square so it is square root of r square plus xl minus xc the whole square is the total circuit impedance for a series rlc circuit also this is this equation is very important please note this stuff correct answer here is option a next question mega is used to measure dash okay so before answering this question just know that mega is meg ohm meter okay now from this term itself it is very much clear that meg ohm meter means it is used for measuring of resistance okay so it is used for measuring options i'll read out a high voltage b high resistance c high current d all of this it is used for measuring of 
high resistance. It is used for measuring the resistance of generally insulators. Insulators will be having very high resistance, right? So it is used for measuring the resistance of insulators. So it is high resistance. Correct answer is option B, which is high resistance. Okay, and also know that mega is meg ohm meter. Next question. The period of machine cycle of 8051 base system with crystal frequency 60 megahertz is dash. So before answering this question, that is we are uh, being asked the period of machine cycle, right? Actually, what is machine cycle? Machine cycle is equal to, for example, for in executing a fund instruction, there is a fetch, decode, symbol uh, machine cycle or symbol execution consists of a fetch, decode and execute, right? So this total, these three steps con uh, constitute a single machine cycle. And for the case of 8051, there are, there is one machine cycle is equal to, cycle is equal to 12 periods. Okay, so this is the equation for one machine cycle, 12 periods is required for 8051 to execute the total fetch, decode, execute and everything. It requires 12 periods. Okay, so it is a, this uh, crystal uh, oscillator is having a frequency. It is crystal frequency is 16 megahertz. So the, uh, if, if the crystal frequency is 16 megahertz, then the period is equal to 1 by 16 megahertz is the period, right? It is the period. And for one machine cycle, how many, how much period is required? Into 12, right? So this is, it, this is the period for one machine cycle. So one machine cycle is equal to 12 by, 12 by 16 megahertz, you can write, okay? It will be equal, if you solve it, you will get 0 0.75 microsecond is the answer for this question. That is the period of Machine cycle is 0 0.75 microseconds. These are the questions which I have included in this video. I hope that these questions while solving this, this will be useful for those who are preparing for HSFC and SDAC and VSSC location. Technical assistant examination, a lot of people has applied for the post and I hope that these question answer discussions will be very much useful because all exam patterns and question patterns are almost similar. So please do make use of these videos for your exam preparation. And if you, uh, if you found this video useful for your preparation, please do give it a thumbs up and share this video with maximum of friends. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel.